Our team is reviewing our strategy today. We are talking about 2023 and looking ahead to 2024. And I know a lot of you want to see more of the behind the scenes of how we plan things, how things happen. So we are going to essentially vlog this process. I'm also going to just share the raw clips of what was discussed because I think that that process can be helpful for you and you may learn a few things. And as you are likely going through strategizing yourself right now, this could be fun and I thought we could do it together. And in this video as well, we have a team member, her name is Helen. She'll be in here as well. And we talk a little bit about what happened this year, what's going to happen next year. So without any further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so basically I wanted to start by just reiterating our vision and our mission because I think that's really important in doing any strategy. You wanna make sure we know what the high level purposes before we kind of do anything so as you know we're here to transform the harmful fashion industry we do that by supporting fashion brands because we want to make sure the people that are actually out there doing the work have the tools and the education to be able to do that mm -hmm. and then we give them like results oriented programs consulting services just like really equip them with everything they need and we're really here to make sustainability the obvious choice yeah. and something that people don't have to compromise for it's something that everyone knows that it's just good business and really future proofs your business too yeah absolutely with that being said so what i think was really good this year was like we really solidified lyb and we were able to really perfect it get our clients results which i'm really excited about so i think that was really good and for the remainder of this year i just really want to continue to grow our impact and scale it and then also for next year to just continue to make sure that we always have like new clients coming in, clients mm -hmm. are getting results, and then we can kind of think a little bit more about like what's after that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You also struck me with the difference between what other products and services out there is mm -hmm. you're really coming at it from a business perspective mm -hmm. as opposed to the design, just like the creative aspect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's important because it's like for new brand owners, there's so many skills you need to have your business transformed. Like you need the product, the creative yeah. stuff and the design stuff, 100%. But you also need the business stuff because otherwise, like I mentioned, it's just an expensive hobby, yeah. right? Like yeah. it's, what's the point? You're just burning cash yeah. making these items. And if they're not going to sell, like what's the point of doing this, mm -hmm. right? Or like an Alex Smoothie says, like you're basically working 100 hours to avoid working 40 hours. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is I. I don't think people set out to do that. No. <laughs> so for the rest of the quarter, I kind of like to start with overall for the year, like what the goals are. And then I break it down into quarterly goals. And then that way they can slice and dice into monthly. And then ideally it's like every single week. Okay, how do I work up to that? Okay. So basically I wanted to kind of just round out the year. So for the rest of this quarter for Q4, it's really around like setting up the Sustainable Fashion Players TSF, yeah. which we've done, but it's just continuing to get like more people in there, get people engaged, make sure we're giving value to people mm -hmm. and see how it ladders up to like everything else we're doing. And then the other thing is taking in new clients for LIB, which is exciting. We've been um, kind of closing our doors for a few months because I really wanted to make sure the clients currently were able to like get all the support they needed, get the results there they're going to be able to get. So I was like perfecting the program behind the scenes, which I'm always doing. I'm always like kind of like redoing lessons, making mm -hmm. things clear, but yeah. also, you know, the market changes, things change. So then your product can't always stay the same either, which is what I always tell our clients. Like yeah. you always have to iterate. Yeah. All this to say, I'm really, really proud of the program now. I'm, I think it's in a really, really good place. So I want to just like have more people be enrolled. And then between us, I really want our marketing to be in a good place because I think next year I would love to be a little bit more hands off and kind of focus more on the sales, yeah. like I mentioned, and the strategy. I know I kind of said maybe looking for some part time sales help. We'll see. Like, I think right now, if I get booked up for sales, then yes, of course, like we don't want that to be the bottleneck in the business, mm -hmm. but um, we'll see if we get there. It could be like a Q1 next year thing. Yeah. So, those are kind of the projects. Did you have any questions about that? A little seems pretty straightforward. And for you, I know we were going to talk a little bit more about your career goals and your KPIs, but there's obviously marketing KPIs that we'll talk about later, which will be quite closely tied to your KPIs. Yeah. But then also, I would love to kind of tie in some LYB sales targets to your goals too, because okay. it's like how many people have taken the masterclass, how many people have been enrolled in TSF. Mm -hmm. And I think that's 
can be like part of your role too. So then yes. you can also see how you're like contributing to the business. Yeah. And it also makes sense to, to sort of integrate marketing and sales mm -hmm. because one obviously informs the other. Totally. One cannot survive yeah. without the other. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So that's what I was thinking there. And then for October, like we'll talk a little bit more about ads and that stuff. I think as of right now for the sales strategy, a lot of it has been like people reaching out to us, which we're really, really privileged. Yeah. But I want to get a lot better at like our outreach strategy because we can't just count on people stumbling upon us. Mm -hmm. That's just not great. So I really feel like that's something we need to kind of figure out. How do we proactively get in front of people right when they need us the most mm -hmm. instead of like people having to figure it out, feel a bit lost and somehow circumstantially stumble upon our resources. So I really want to figure that out too. So just like that's kind of the plan for the rest of the year. And then next year, uh, we'll kind of just continue to grow and scale. But I'll take a pause. Any thoughts, any ideas, anything you think we're missing? I'm guessing you also have ideas for TSF too and like how to measure yeah. like what does success look like in that space and yeah. that kind of thing as well. Yeah, doing a community is something I've been thinking about for a really long time, but I wanted to do it once we had the bandwidth to do it and I knew we would be able to do a good job. Yeah. Because if you half-ass it, it just, it's a waste of everyone's time. It's yeah. like, why are we here? No one's really talking. I don't really get anything out of this. So then it just falls apart. So yeah. it's definitely something that's very all or nothing. So I think we're now in a place where we have so many resources. Like we have the YouTube, we have the podcast. We have so many resources. And then so it's like in one place. Mm -hmm. I would love people to be able to ask questions yeah. and get further support. So I think that's a really good space. So yeah, I think all this to say we're set up for success to finally be able to fully support it and bring what I had visioned to life, which is exciting. And we can talk more about that under the TSF strategy portion. But yeah, for sure. Like, I think the KPIs around growth and engagement, we can kind of talk about what that looks like and quantify it. Mm -hmm. But it'll definitely be a big focus for the remainder of the year. And yeah. then, of course, into next year as well. Yeah. And I believe you wanted me to take like a role in that as well with managing like the podcast and the YouTube stuff yes. like that. Yeah. For next year, basically, it's... More or less kind of the same, but just to hopefully new heights. And I know that sometimes that can be not super sexy and exciting because everyone's always like, oh my God, I want to like launch new products. I yeah. want to grow like 10x or 100x. Yeah. But I just think that's not realistic. And I want us to set realistic, but still ambitious targets. And one thing too, I realized now after half a decade in entrepreneurship is that focus and discipline is so important. And it's like taking the time to figure out what we're focusing on. And then once we've set the strategy, we've set the course, we know it makes sense. It's like laser being focusing on it and not getting distracted by yeah. like, we could do this, we could do that, we could do that. Because I've done that. Mm -hmm. And then your spread so thin and nothing gets done well. So I'm trying to be like super disciplined. Yeah. Um, so I'm in my disciplined era. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. And I'm also curious with, it seems like you've been hiring a few more new people, like obviously myself and looking to hire more people i'm curious to kind of a quick snapshot of like your growth with the business if that makes sense like mm -hmm. uh, and what that looks like going forward does, yeah does that make sense yeah 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 i think it depends on what happens i feel like i always want to try to hire i mean every business wants to hire at the right time right you don't want to hire too late so that it's like everyone's burnt out everyone's like working so hard and your clients aren't being like fulfilled, like like product fulfillment isn't good. So I obviously don't want that, but I also don't want to hire too soon and then have no one like have any work to do. Yeah. So it's kind of a fine balance, but I'm now at a point where I feel like in order to continue to grow and scale our impact and also maintain the current client experience and the current just client satisfaction and of course like how much we want to give back to a community it's like obviously I need to bring people in and I need to scale and tangentially to that I've talked about this before on the podcast too but like it's just relinquishing control and trusting other people as well and just making sure that they're trained they're onboarded they know what they're doing how everything works together so yeah yeah I so all this to say like I think we'll probably bring on a couple more people next year if things go well I'm thinking maybe like a community um manager type person because if tsf goes well and what i envision happens i think it's going to be like too much for me and you to i like i want someone to be in there all the time like yeah. engaging with people and that's like a full-time thing yeah 
So probably like a community type person and then also um, someone to help me with client work as well mm-hmm. to make sure that the experience is good. Like I've had people before, but I think really just having someone dedicated to that. And I also think it'd be really cool if it was like a client of ours that I has gone through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what I've been thinking. So yeah. Um, anyways, yeah, no, uh, I, that's I kind of the vision. So smart. Like I, re- I made a note with that listening to your loom. I think that's so good because you don't have to like onboard them as much necessarily and they're totally already, they're already yeah. they get it right yeah, like and enculturated yeah and yeah. they i think the really cool thing is they can give shared experience it's yeah. like oh when i'm building my brand this is how i felt this is how i dealt with it and mm-hmm. i feel like that adds to the support that someone can get because it's like okay yes i get to learn from selena and all this stuff but someone that went through it they know exactly potentially how I feel right now. I yeah. can understand why they made the choices they made. They can talk me through it. So mm-hmm. it's just like an extra layer of support. Yeah. So I feel like that just it's kind of a no brainer. Yeah, support and trust. Yeah. And it also shows too that you've really invested in nurturing like your clients. Yes. To the extent of like also bringing them in to, and as an employee and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people nowadays will be like, oh, I like to support, you know, female founders or whatever. But like I genuinely try to whenever possible, whether it's like people in a community, past clients. Um, it's just like I think we can all grow together, mm-hmm. you know, as cheesy as that sounds. Uh, but anyways, all this to say, I don't think we'll have any big, new, exciting launches next year. But as of right now, I really think we're on to something. It's like the precipice of something like really taking off, which I'm excited about. But I think we just need to stick to it and see yeah. it through because things take time to marinate in market. Things take time to take off. And if we keep switching every three months, mm-hmm. just nothing's going to take off. Nothing's yeah. going to work. So I really think we should like stick to this for at least six months, see how it goes. But I have a really good feeling about TSF. I think it's really needed. People have been like really excited about it. Awesome. So. Yeah. I, I, I'm i really excited about it. So um, Q1, Q2 is really just like continuing to push out TSF, continuing to support clients through LYB. Um, I'm trying a different structure like we mentioned. So instead of doing like cohort based, it's yeah. not going to be like open enrollment. But at the same time, I'm going to potentially limit it at the very beginning too, because I want to still make sure I have bandwidth to fully support everyone. Mm-hmm. So that still gives me the ability to kind of like cap it and control it. But then at the same time, allows people to enroll whenever they want to. Yeah. Because before it would suck if, like, someone wanted to join now. And they, miss. And they can't. And they yeah. Miss. Right. So I think this is better. Um, and I finally, like, found a way where it's I'm able to do it in more of a group pr- capacity, but still give them more tailored support, too. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. Any kind of questions about, like, the Q1 and Q2 priorities? Um, for wise watching and things like that, I mm-hmm. was wondering. I was thinking of the courses and the program I've been a part of, and I think something that's been effective is just video testimonials mm-hmm. on like the sales pages and stuff like that yeah. in particular. Because you can actually, if like, I mean, obviously the copy has to be good and all those elements. But yeah. I feel like there's something about seeing people who have gone through it, the video. Yeah. It adds just like a little layer of like, yep, ness to the sales page. So yeah. Potentially to think about. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to, um, we can talk more about the LAB stuff later, but I'm going to ask some of our clients to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe we could use like social media as well. With the totally. Like, yeah. Yeah. Repurpose it. Mm-hmm. Repurpose everything. Uh, okay, cool. And then um, in terms of the Q3, Q4, like I, I always kind of rejig strategy as we go on but every single quarter after we finish i like to reflect on the last quarter and then think ahead as well so things can still change but as of right now this is what i'm thinking so q3 um our birthday is in august and i always like to do something special for that so we'll kind of think about what we want to do there and i have found after like doing this now for like half a decade there is definitely seasonality in the business Mm -hmm. um summer is definitely slower um a lot of clients kind of like go on vacation um and then september is like very stressful because all of a sudden they get back and they're like i want to get back into things and i'm like where were you three weeks ago so so summer is definitely slower and i think same thing with sales too like Mm -hmm. people are just like not thinking about investing in something right now they're like off on holidays so It's good to know that. So then I think somewhere like we can kind of just rest and recuperate as well and gear up for like Q4. Yeah, Q4. Q3 and Q4. Q4. Yeah, end of Q3, beginning of Q4 kind of thing. But then also we can take the time to kind of think about internally what we're doing and just re-strategize. So is that the internal email? 
Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's like internal H2 strategy. Think about what's going on. Um, and we can probably like get ahead of a lot of content too. Like I can probably batch a lot of stuff. And yeah, Q4 is kind of like back at it. And then Q1. I would say like the big pushes of people liking to like get back into things with their business is definitely September and January. Those are like peak. And then that kind of trickles into a little bit of October and February and March. Mm. But those summer months and kind of, I guess, like the end of spring are definitely slower from mm. what I've seen. So it kind of maps yeah. onto general like retail consumer. Yeah. Behavior. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just so you know. So we can like based off of this kind of slice and dice every single month what we want to do. But something I also want to potentially implement next month too is for you to have a special quarterly project. Um, and at first I thought it could be cool for it to be monthly, but honestly, I think for it monthly to be moody enough, yeah. yeah, I think quarterly is better and then you can chip away at it. And this could be an area of the business where you feel like um, it's something I haven't thought of or maybe I don't have time for it and you think would really impact the business. And it's also something you're potentially passionate about yeah. and also potentially want to like gain skills in. So if you want to kind of have a think about what you want your first quarterly project to be, um, yeah, let me know. But I think that would be a really fun way for you to continue to be able to give back to the business, mm -hmm. but also feel like your work is impactful. Yeah, that so, sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, I think summer is, all right, summer. Quarterly is definitely a good. Yeah, that's um, what I was thinking yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you can kind of chip away at it. Yeah. And that way it can be something that's meaty enough too to mm -hmm. actually have the impact you want it to potentially have. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. So that is kind of the strategy. It's really just sometimes strategy can be like, oh, we're launching this thing. We're doing this thing, which is like, again, big and sexy and like super glamorous or whatever. But it's like just doing the work. Like, you know how Alex says, like, just do the boring work. It's yeah. really I think we're in that do the boring work era because I think we're finally like set up and I feel like everything is starting to click and make sense. Mm -hmm. And for so long, certain things were clicking and certain yeah. things weren't, but I think it's fully now clicked across the board, at least for me. So I feel really good about just continuing to do this for the next six to eight months and really seeing where it goes. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. What do you think was behind like uh, the lack of clicking, clicking and then, and then like <laughs> why or like how did things start to click? Yeah, good question. I always talk about how entrepreneurship is kind of a bit like a video game. Like you kind of need to have all the levels before you're ready to move forward. Mm -hmm. And I think in my instance, a lot of it was like sales skills that yeah. I feel like I didn't quite have. So it was just like different ways of thinking about how to package it and sell it. And for so long, I don't know if I was resistant or if it was just like I didn't have the knowledge about how to do it. Or maybe I just didn't have time to think creatively about it. So that was like one piece. And then the other piece, too, is just like relinquishing control and being like, OK, like we need help. I can't just do this alone. It's mm -hmm. obviously not going to be able to grow and scale with just me. Like we need more people. So that was a big part of it, too. I think another thing, too, is just looking, not thinking about what other people are doing in the industry, like especially with the course or like the online space, because mm -hmm. there's a very like, you know, you do a webinar, you do like this and you yeah. do like the email list. And it's a very like proven process and I think when you're a new entrepreneur you follow that and I that's probably the best way to go about it because people have done that before you you know it works but throughout that process you learn what works and what doesn't for your business and yeah. for your community so I think I'm now at the point now where I know what works I know what doesn't work and I'm now just going to start to like trust my instinct trust what my community has been saying to me and then apply that. So it's less like cookie cutter, but me finally, I think like taking the reins and being like, okay, I've done all these things. We have this data. The community is telling us this and just like moving forward with this strategy that I feel good about. So. Yeah. You can also see where the gaps are mm -hmm. in the marketplace as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I really feel like if you want to revolutionize and transform an industry, which is what we're trying to do, you can't really be doing what everyone else is doing. You have to do something different to mm -hmm. stand out. You have to provide something that people aren't getting elsewhere because yeah. otherwise, what's the point? Yeah. Right. So, yeah, but really good question. I think it's just a, a lot of things around like skills, mindset. And then finally, I think perhaps also like trusting that I know what's best mm -hmm. instead of just following what everyone else is doing. Yeah. I hope that this was a fun glimpse into the behind the scenes at our team. And I also hope that you got a lot out of this episode. It was actually really fun having you as a fly on the wall and just seeing what the process is like. And so again, hope you learned something out of it. And I hope that this inspires you to strategize for your business too, because 
a lot of the time you need to take inventory of what you're doing and really see if it makes sense. And the other thing too, is you want to make sure you're not just working for the sake of working. It actually gets you to the direction that you want to get. With that being said, let me know if you enjoyed this. We have a few more behind the scenes content pieces planned. So I'm really excited for you to see this. And together, let's transform the harmful fashion industry.